Hey guys, welcome back to Sports with Mono and Mono. I'm Jim. I'm here with my now 56-year-old brother, Steve. How was your birthday? It was very nice. Thank you, uh, Jim. Glad to be back here on the 23rd of January. Yep. And uh, had a real good birthday. And uh, hey. Excellent. A lot, lot going on uh, since my birthday. Yep. A lot going on. A lot. So... But before we start, um, I want to first mention that our, our first segment in the monologue is sponsored by Coriano Trucking of Summer Hill, New York now. Okay. Used to say in uh, Havistraw, but, you know. So I'm going to turn it right over to you, Steve. You're, it was your birthday last week, so you got the monologue this week. I appreciate that, and... My monologue is going to be about the New York Jets and the hiring of Robert Sala. Okay. So I w went on record saying that it's the New York Jets and they will mess this up because they're the New York Jets. I wasn't a believer in hiring a defensive coordinator or an offensive coordinator, somebody with no head coaching experience, etc., I also thought when Doug Peterson got fired from the Eagles that it was probably probably a logical choice that within a week or two, Joe Douglas with his Eagle connection would have hired Doug Peterson as a fail-safe, Super Bowl winning coach, etc. Did I know anything about Robert Sala other than he was the defensive coordinator of San Francisco? No, to be honest. However, within the past week and his introductory press conference, I couldn't be more impressed with this guy. Um, I think the Jets hit a home run. I think he's going to come in. I think he's going to change the culture. He's going to uh, hold these players accountable. I think uh, the fact that he brought Mike LaFleur over, the offensive coordinator, who's the brother of Matt LaFleur, yep. and, and uh, he'll be the offensive coordinator. He hired his defensive coordinator, which is a guy named Jeff Ulbrich, who is a former linebacker uh, in the NFL, Looks like a no-nonsense guy. Um, in, his, in his press conference, obviously, the elephant in the room is Sam Darnold. Yep. He gave a great answer. I can't yep. add. It's too premature, et cetera, et cetera. We have to evaluate that type of thing. But I think, again, the Jets hit a home run with this guy, and whether it takes him two years or so to turn this around, I think this is the right guy at the right time. Yep. And um, I'm, it's a good monologue, <laughs> very good, actually. And I'm trying not to interject as, as you're speaking, but I couldn't agree with you more. I think this guy is rock solid. Jets finally made a, a – well, listen, we'll see how it works out. They thought Adam Gase was going to be the savior too. But you're right, Sam Darnold and Elephant in the Room, you didn't get a rave review from Robert Sala, to be quite honest with you. So, he's But the difference between him and Adam Gase is nobody, for the most part, was sold on Adam Gase, okay? And <laughs> well, did anybody the, the think— The Johnsons were. Right, but apparently. did anybody think Adam Gase was going to be this bad, like right. Rich Cotite bad? No. But what do you see happening here with the Jets, Robert Sala? You see Jimmy Garoppolo as the next quarterback of the New York Jets? I can't answer that question. I, I don't know. I have no clue. We have to see how it falls out. I mean, the Jets have the number two pick. Yep. If they fall in love with Zach Wilson or Justin Fields, they may do that. I don't think they will. I'm a big fan of Zach Wilson, by the way. I think, I think he's I gonna, do too. He's going to play out in the NFL very well. After yep. Trevor Lawrence, I'm a Zach Wilson guy. Yep. I think the Jets at number two take this uh, beast from Oregon, the right tackle. That's my. That's what I would do. Or at number two, if a team wants to trade up for a quarterback, fall back three spots. You know, they got a lot of capital here. Right, but here's the other room. Wait, let me finish. Here's the other big rumor. Oh, Deshaun Watson. I don't see it because I'm not giving up three first-round picks for Not for him. that talent. No. no. Is he a good quarterback? Yes. Yes, it's very but good. But you got so much to fill in the cupboards that you got to use these draft picks. And he's pulling a LeBron James in, in, in Houston saying, you know, I want say in this, and we <laughs> talked about it, and our brother talked about it, and so forth. So, You know, my brother Tom said, and I told Jim off the air, and, and it was very astute. Tom said, I'm reading this, you know, Deshaun Watson wants to be advised. And Tom said, 
If I was the owner of this team, I would have invited him into my office. I would have said, Deshaun, absolutely, I will keep you involved. I absolutely respect your opinion. And that's it. (laughs) And I will take your opinion for exactly what it's worth. Not that he's saying this to him. Yep. Nothing. But you know, Nothing. when we're talking about Robert Sal and the Jets, it looks like they made a good decision here. Right? Yeah. And I really like the guy. I do, know. too. I think this guy's presence, and like I said in the monologue, he's going to change the culture, yep. accountability, and I think the Jets, a year or two from now, will be competitive. Competitive. Agreed. So, you know, while we're on the topic of football, right, it's a big football weekend. Yeah. And um, it's one of our favorite weekends. Got an email from one of our listeners, James Walsh. This morning, talking about it, and it's one of the great weekends. So, you know, hey, tomorrow- Walsh, don't you have a grandson you need to go visit or something? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm kidding. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Big time. But um, so let's talk about the games, right? Let's talk well, about. Let's talk about again. I'll use the term "elephant in the room." What's been the the lead story all week is Pat Mahomes. Is he playing? Is he not playing? Okay, so we're going to start in the AFC. Yeah. You know? Well, I knew he was playing. Of course, <laughs> we knew he was playing. This kid is a warrior. He is, and so much so, I actually feel because of the "is he playing, not playing" type of thing, and he hasn't had the Mahomes type game that we've. Or, accustomed to, I won't be surprised if he throws for 405 touchdowns tomorrow and okay. shuts everybody up yep. and comes back. Okay. I still like Kansas City. I said before the season all started. All you've been all in. Back to it. back. I'm all in on Kansas City. Buffalo, great season. They could win. Don't get me wrong. But I'm all in on Kansas City. Too. All right. And listen. Because their home is another factor. Sports with Mono and Mono and send us an email. Who you think is better or, you know, the year Rodgers is having or would you rather have Mahomes? It's, send us an email at sportswithmono and mono at gmail.com and let us know. But here's my, here's my two cents. Sure. Go ahead. Right? I think Patrick Mahomes is awesome. But he got the way he stood up and started wobbling around, and it didn't look like it was even a, you know, a major, you know, helmet to helmet, crown to crown type type hit. But he's going to play. But I was going to go whether he was healthy or not. I got to go against you. I'm I'm going to take the Buffalo Bills to make the Super Bowl, and I I like them. And you know, people say, well, well, they don't have a great running game. I think this guy Singletary is a stud. Okay. And the year Stefan Diggs has had, you know, okay. Minnesota threw him away for a, you know, a bag sandwich. of dirt, you know, and what a year he's having. And the Allen to Diggs, I think, I think that I'm, I'm going with the Buffalo Bills today. Tomorrow. Okay. I mean, tomorrow. I'm sorry. That's fine. Yeah, That's your opinion. Yep. I have my opinion. Yeah. I'm all in on Kansas City. And listen, if Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, there's no bigger fans than, than us. I, Both of those guys. I also think Buffalo, because they're young, this is great for them. I think it will be one of those learning things where they, and a year be, or two, even then, if, then I'm all in. Even if they lost, you would say, you know, these guys are on the right path and it's looking good for Buffalo. and, and It's so good forth. for Josh Allen that he, he's in this championship game environment. And yep. uh, yeah, we talked about him, what a year he's had. Buffalo is not going away. They are they are loaded for bear for the next three, four years. Absolutely. However, Kansas City has proven them selves to be the best team in the NFL. I got you. And I'm all in. I'm I'm just I'm I'm going out on a limb and taking Buffalo, but you know, Patrick Mahomes, the guy's gonna show up whether he's got a bad bum toe or a bum leg or whatever and a concussion. Gonna be a great game. Looking yeah, forward to absolutely. that. Absolutely. Now shifting gears to the NFC. Yeah. You got such a marquee matchup. <laughs> Brady versus Rogers. This is what you hope for. This right? is this is actually Really good stuff. It is. And, uh, you know, I read something this week about Aaron Rodgers that I didn't know. He has the lowest interception uh, rate rate by far of anybody in the history of the NFL. In the history or the past? I was just thought you were going to say the past 10 years or something. In the history of the NFL. Okay. This guy, I, I, you know, it's one of those unsung things where – you just don't appreciate it while you're watching, and then you hear something like that. Yep. He's thrown 89 interceptions in his career. <laughs> I know. Brett Favre threw like 89 in a season. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm I being know. facetious, but I know. out of like 
four thousand something attempts or something. Big fan. It's incredible. Of guys, it's know? absolutely incredible. And he dates one supermodel after the next. Right. Too. This guy's got it all going, you know. But I gotta lean towards Green Bay here. I have to. The way Rodgers is playing, they're home. Okay. I, I get it's Tom. I get it. And I got that's that's what I have to go with. I have to go with the two favorites uh, tomorrow. We're, we're not far apart on this. I think the same thing. I look at Green Bay. I say overall, you know, Devontae Adams and 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 the way Rodgers, this could be his year. You know, he's only got one Super Bowl ring in in, in what, fourteen years, twelve yeah, he's years, thirty eight years old. Man. Right. So he's getting up there. I don't think he's going to leave this one on the table. But I hate to bet against Tom Brady. You know our thoughts on Tom Brady and so forth. I just don't think Tampa Bay has enough across the board for Brady alone to carry this team. And look, Antonio Brown's not playing. You know what a shocker! What a, you know, <laughs> really? Right. Listen, we 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 can't stand him, but he he still is a piece. He could be a piece. Well, I'm just saying. Well, he won't be a piece because he's not playing. But the one player on Tampa Bay I think is a stud to be is this Devin White. No question. Unbelievable year. So he's Tampa's had. defense is very good. They're all over the field. They are. Yeah. You know, this guy, uh, David, at linebacker, too. Uh, mm. Listen, uh, I think it'll be a good game. I think it'll be close. But I got to think Aaron Rodgers pulls this out at home. And uh, Agreed. I'm, I'm going to go Kansas City, Green Bay, Super Bowl. And then we'll... we'll uh, you know, do our analysis. Which would be a, a, a rematch of the first I, Super Bowl. I think it would be great. Right. I think it will be great. I'm going with uh, Buffalo versus Green Bay in the Super Bowl, and I look for Rodgers to take it. And Like I said, I'm rooting for Mahomes. I love him. I hope he's healthy and so forth. Oh, but, he's healthy. But we'll see. He's healthy. Awesome. So before we move off football, there's a couple of things, right? Um Doug Marone was hired by Nick Saban to be the offensive co- or, you know, right, offensive coordinator or yeah. special assistant kind of thing. You know. It's probably a good hire. Right. But college football, it was a great year. They got through it and so forth. I thought forth. Bill, Bill O'Brien was being hired. Bill O'Brien, I'm sorry. What did I say? Doug you Marone? said Doug Marone, yeah. I mean, Bill O'Brien. Is... I retract. Okay. <laughs> The editor regrets the... Uh, okay, because I knew Bill O'Brien was, was the guy. That's who I meant. Yeah, That's I think it's I a mean. good hire. Yep. Bill O'Brien's got college experience, uh, you know, obviously with Penn State, but even before that he was a coordinator at other schools. But a lot of, a lot of stuff has been happening in college football. Danny White, your old Cowboys quarterback, is now the athletic director succeeding... Uh, Philip Fulmer, okay, and so forth. That's a mess. Can't, can't oh, Tennessee, and well, they're all disappearing. These it's guys. unbelievable what a mess it is. Jeremy Pruitt, right? He was a defense coordinator for Nick, Alabama. But this Tennessee went on a seven-game win streak last year. Yep. Started the season two and zero, and then the wheels fell off. Right, yep. so much so that it is such a cesspool what he left behind that he was owed. You know, like these college coaches. Oh, play. they get they walk away but with he, ten million. Yeah, well, you know. you know what? He's not walking away with anything because they fired him without with with, with cause. It's that bad. He's still going to get his money. No, he's but. not. I, I read this extensively. But I thought he of you is when, not getting his money. But I thought of you when Danny White got yeah, hired. Yeah, right? Danny know? White, I've always been a big fan of. Um, it's a shame that Danny White couldn't uh, get us to the Super Bowl. He was a very serviceable quarterback. on you know, Backed up Roger. We liked him. Punter. Tough as nails, thing. too. Yeah. And I'll always remember when the Cowboys in 1980 went to uh, Philadelphia for the championship game. Wilbur Montgomery. Yeah, he was good. Danny White had such an awful freaking day that day. You know, the Eagles killed us 37 to 7, maybe. It was dark. Uh, yeah, it was but dark. Danny White was a very good quarterback, Excellent. smart guy, Arizona State guy. So I'm happy that he, he, he got this gig, but he's got a tall task of uh, you yep. know, cleaning out the sewer. <laughs> you bet. You bet. <laughs> but Tennessee, you know, and that's that's prestigious football. That's that's Peyton's old alma mater. It's SEC and so- stuff. <laughs> And you think it's a coincidence that Philip Fulmer decided to retire? <laughs> right. I don't think so. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of dirty, dirty laundry in that basket, for sure. No question. But anyway, enjoy the weekend of football, guys. And um, 
Like I said, send us an email at sportswithmonoandmono at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. So, Steve, let's move on to... Um, well, let's stay in the NFL. There were other hirings. Well, yeah. We, we Real quick, about Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell. Detroit a press conference that you had. It certainly you know? was. Uh, different. <laughs> <laughs> bite your kneecaps off? That's good. As long as you're still not 3-13. and 13. <laughs> And get knocked down and bite your kneecaps. You can get up all you want, but you better win. Yep. But I think that's a good hire. I think he, uh, he'll, it, like, like Salah, he'll bring, you know. But you're right. One the culture the, change. But one of the hirings, and again, you knew this was going to come up as as an issue, right? I thought Eric B. Enemy for sure was going to get a gig. And he didn't get a gig, right? So when you t- we want to talk about the hiring process and the Rooney rule and all that kind of stuff, there were no black co- coaches hired. And, you know, I'm not sure if that's a, a sign of the, you know, the owners and so forth. They don't want black players or black coaches. I, I don't get it. But I really thought Eric Bieniemy was going to get a gig, and he did not. Yeah, I mean... So there were, you know, the Dan Campbells, the uh, Nick Serini, or whoever these right, guys the are. The Eagles now. And, yeah. Uh, but you're right. I knew you thought Peterson for sure was going to the Jets with the Douglas connection, and it didn't happen. Hey. Listen, I, we're all for hiring, you know, black coaches in the in the NFL. There's no question sure. about it. There's a lot of qualified guys, but it's maybe it's the old, you know, old boys club kind of saying it's still going on. Is it a coincidence? I mean, come on, let's be real here, right? Yeah. Um, but the enemy is still at Kansas City, the Super Bowl, you know. And you and I remember watching him as a running back at Colorado. Absolutely. The guy was impossible to catch. Yeah, he had, yeah. Yeah, he had a great. Uh, listen, this guy is. And he's paid his dues. He's going to get a, a gig. It's, he's going to get a gig either next year or the year after. Yeah. Okay, so he's at the top of the list. Yeah. As far as the black candidates go, if you will. Right. He's got to be at the Can top I explain of the list. it? No, I can't. Right. But, uh, you know, again, it's the unsung. <laughs> Unwritten rule of. Right. You know, you know the no, old no, boys club. That's I, it. I that's the best thing you could have come up with. It's the old boys club. Yep. And we could do impressions of, you know, J.R. Ewing uh, <laughs> at the Cattlemen's Club uh, having a facetious conversation on this subject, but that's the point we're trying to make. Which yesterday, by the way, I did watch an old Dallas episode, the first season, the first Ewing barbecue. Wow. And this goes out to Mike Garvey from uh, Naples, Florida. Right. Him and I worship that character. Larry Hagman as J.R. Ewing was one of the great Television shows ever. Without question. All right. So, Steve, let's move on to the National Basketball Association. Wow, 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 wow. The big three. Let me let me throw it out there. What do you think? Is this going to bring the championship to Brooklyn? No. <laughs> ah, they had a tough loss on, on Kyrie's return, you know, at Cleveland. We did. Oh, boy. They gave up, I don't know, 147 points to the cap. Don't get me wrong. In this game, the three of them combined for 96 points, et cetera, et cetera. Let me just put this. <laughs> let me just uh, let me just sum this up here. It is the big three. It is. And they're all great basketball they players. Are. Can this coexist? Does Steve Nash even have a say in what goes on in that court? You mean court? head coach Mike D'Antoni? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Steve, Steve has a say. Let's be real here. But I got to say one thing, and I talked about this with, with, with people, this Kyrie Irving, right, just disappears for seven games, and we worship this guy. He was classy and articulate. Right. But th- his first press conference when he comes back from this seven-day layoff for personal <laughs> matters, he just had his head on his arms, and he's leaning over like this was the worst thing. Not the worst thing. He knew he had to do this. But he knew it was 10, 15 minutes. But it's Next present, question. But it's uh, presentation. It's, it, it's personal. Uh, but please. It's presentation. You don't, you don't sit there with your yes, head. This is Kyrie Irving. Right. He doesn't care. But here's the thing about Kyrie Irving. When he gets on the court... He's awesome. He is awesome. We agree. Nobody yes. dis- disputes that. But the point, Kevin Durant, he's awesome. But the thing about Kyrie Irving is he is a smart guy. And he knows 
There's no accountability. He can do what he wants when he wants, and he just proved this. But that's why we don't talk and about the NBA. And he makes $35 million a year. But that's why we don't dwell that's on the exactly NBA. That's exactly why we don't have the passion for the NBA but, that we used to when Larry Bird and Michael Jordan. And, and the old Knicks. And the old the, Knicks. And, Wolf you know, Frazier. And it was even awesome. the Patrick Ewing and, and, and the bad boy Pistons and all that stuff. Right. John Starks until the last game, and right. he wouldn't listen to Pat Riley, and that's why the Knicks. So I hope the audience understands where we're coming from. Yeah. With this. But before we get off the NBA, I I, I got to tell you this one: who's the best player in this game? This Luka Doncic is unbelievable. This guy really no, is making just a, tearing it yeah, up. He's making a case for And himself. he's what, 22, 23 oh, years yeah, old? Yeah, this kid is the real deal. He's going to have Larry Bird numbers. and he just, already does. Just be revered in the NBA lores as, wow, this kid was unbelievable. Nah, Dallas hit a home run. Uh, yep. nobody, I, nobody could expect the production that you're getting from this kid. So he ain't got, he's not leaving Dallas. <laughs> At all, and I, listen, but he is. He's very impressive. And I'm and he, bringing it up because, and I'm like a big I fan said, of him. I, I I watch the NBA, you know, here and there. But when I this guy Doncic is on, I love watching this kid. You know, I do too. I really do. He's he's. <laughs> what do you think about the Knicks? You know, Tibbs is doing a pretty good job, right? They're hanging in there. Yeah. R.J. Barrett had a game. To me, was considered a breakout game. He actually had. What we thought he could possibly yeah, be. I think he had 28 points, a career yep. high. So I knew the Knicks were going on a four-game uh, West Coast thing. Yep. They were 5-3. and three. They got on this losing streak. And I, I said to myself, before you blink, they're going to be 5-15. and 15. However, Tibbs is the coach. Martin Luther King Day was Monday. They played Orlando. It was a close game, but the Knicks won. Okay. Now I knew after that after blowing out Boston, it was yeah, embarrassing. Yeah, and I was going to, I, I was going to get to that. I'm embarrassed because I took Boston that day, and then I, I, I say, I, I, my son actually said, "Hey, Dad, did you see the Celtic Knicks score?" It I was said, embarrassing, embarrassing. But they go to the West Coast to play in Golden State. Golden State won three in a row, and guess what? To your point, R.J. Barrett and I give the Knicks credit. They beat Golden State in the first game uh, on the West Coast. I think things are trending very well. Obviously, there's pieces to the puzzle still needed to be, you know, added. Yeah. But R.J. Barrett is, is... they got a good foundation. R.J. Barrett is part of that foundation. And this guy, we Obi are Top, a huge R.J. Barrett And fan. you and I talked about Obi Top, and he's going to be a player. This yeah. kid's a nice kid, he's too. A, yeah. He's handling he's, himself well. He's a well. nice player. And, uh, yeah, the Knicks are... You know, listen, they won their fifth game... Uh, here in January, <laughs> last year they won their fifth game. I think on like February twenty seventh. Right. <laughs> you know, but, but it's January twenty third, twenty twenty one, and I'm telling you here, it's going to be the Lakers versus the Brooklyn Nets in the NBA Finals, and this is exactly what yeah, Adam, Adam I Silver wants. I can't dispute it's that. It's going to happen. It is, and the L. A. Lakers are going to beat the Nets. Yeah. I'll take LeBron and Davis for one more Exactly, year. to secure his legacy is this this yeah. god in basketball. And he deserved it. He's an unbelievable player, LeBron James. But he's also the commissioner. It's like yeah. sports with mono and mono. I gotta be the producer and the on air personality. I right? get it. I get it. And I gotta be Anthony Davis. Okay. <laughs> All right. So listen, let's move on to our Major League Baseball, because there's a couple of things that have happened. And, uh, you know, um, I, I, I got to tell you, from, from a baseball perspective, this whole Jared Porter and, and, and the Mets, I'm going to start with that. Why wouldn't you? And you, you think, you know, what is this guy thinking? How, why do you need to do this? You're the general manager of the New York Mets, but he had a track record, so you got to question the hiring process. This wasn't coming out? Right, in the interview. So the, the irony here, my point is that, you know, it's Steve Cohen, right? Gazillionaire, and you hit it right on the head. They're going to start to sign people. It's going to be, uh, yeah. you know, they're going to be in the playoffs. And he's got a lot of dirty laundry on him. But but the Jared Porter, what are you thinking? Right. But Why? To, to your point, the interview process here, okay? 
Jared, right, you know, good resume, this, that, and the other thing. Jared, is there anything we need to know that, you know, may, you know, everything's great, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, the hiring process and not being able to, it's social media type of thing, blah, blah, blah. And now it comes out, what, a month or two after he gets hired. Hear me out here. But to Steve Cohen's credit, <laughs> within hours of finding this out. Which you knew was going to happen, well, of course. Well, I think... If the Wilpons were still running it, it, it might have taken a week or two because the, the, the public pressure probably. Swiftly, you got it. That's it. We made a mistake. We move on. It's all about it's the, about the accountability, the set, and the other thing. Right. So Theo Epstein was hired by Major League Baseball. Don't be surprised if Theo... Gets uh, bounced uh, from uh, public not, pressure here. That bounce from Major League Baseball takes the gig for the Mets. Who would be a better fit? <laughs> well, we talked about that uh, I'm eight saying, months ago and thought that could happen. Well, the job is now open. <laughs> I, 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 said, I think that's a reach. It's a reach, but don't be surprised. Okay. I'm throwing it out there. Okay. But listen, <laughs> on, on Major League Baseball... Wait, wait, wait. Let, let me finish something about the Mets. It was surprising, I thought, that George Springer did not sign with them. That was my point I was just okay. about to bring up. Okay. And by the way, <laughs> George Springer got more money than DJ LeMahieu. A lot more money. <laughs> and I thought about it, and you were right. You knew that they, the Yankees were going to sign LeMahieu, which they did. But at a bargain basement price, I mean, compared to Springer... I would take G DJ LeMahieu over George Springer, no matter what position he played. Well, I mean, so. the difference is uh, Springer is is younger, outfielder, this type of thing. DJ LeMahieu is very happy with his contract. That's all I care about. Le yeah, we talked about Until it. Until he saw what well, George Springer signed for. True, but DJ <laughs> LeMahieu, we know, is the type of guy where he got his money, he's happy, he's got six years. That's why I love this kid. He All he's going to do is play baseball. He doesn't worry about the other crap. And we get that. We That was your monologue two weeks ago that's when right. you were dead on that he was coming back to pinstripe because that's where he but wanted to But staying on the New York Yankees, I am very concerned about the pitching. Um, oh, we lost J.A. Happ. Yeah, J. Twins for $8 million. <laughs> right. God. Good luck in Minnesota, J.A. <laughs> Thanks for your service. Yep. It's like Phil Hughes going to uh, the Twins. <laughs> Phil Hughes retired. <laughs> he actually. did. I, I, that's why I mentioned it. You know what? Phil Hughes. He was supposed to be the next Sandy Koufax. But Phil Hughes was Yankees. a good guy. He had arm trouble this set. He, he had a couple good years. He was a member of the 2009 Yankees. I got nothing but good things to say about Phil Hughes. Absolutely. Did we expect a lot more? Yes, we did. But, you know, he had a very serviceable career, and I wanted to acknowledge Phil Hughes retired. Yep. And uh, he, he was a, he's a good guy. Yep. So a lot, well, you know, baseball, you know, off season, but it's still happening. We're, what, like 12 weeks away or nine weeks away from spring training, you know, pitchers and catchers? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it, it's the, yeah, no, it's January. I mean, what are we talking? Less than a month. I think they're reporting like they normally would. Or, you know, pitchers, catchers, and what? Mid to end March, I guess. Yeah, no, no, February. No, nobody goes down in February. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's Florida. There's no COVID down there. <laughs> Mid February. Pitchers and catchers. Okay. Right? But so the Yankees have moves to make, and they will. They but will. I, I'm concerned about the pitching, to be honest. Okay. And I'm concerned that they they still have faith in Gary Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> I really. I, I, I am very concerned about this. This is his last you're chance. You're saying this in jest, of course. No, he's I'm, he's going to start. He is. This is his last. This is it. Remember, the he's Yankees... He's the only guy that if he hits 190 this year, his bat, a career average will go I, up. Well, I don't <laughs> care, you know, if he's batting. Hopefully he's batting for me. I didn't think you were an all sold in on Gary Sanchez. I am not. The point is, I can't believe that they still have faith that he can turn this around. And again, look at his numbers. You know, home runs, all this stuff. He he's, could still be dealt. He's, he's an awful catcher defensively. He's lazy. He's a lazy dog. <laughs> I want nothing to do with him. I got you. <laughs> I'm serious. 
That's I why agree. we drafted two catchers in the first round in the last three years. But I thought we were going to sign uh, Ramolta from uh, the Phillies. That's a great point. He, where where he is he? He is out there. He, if I'm the general, if I'm Cashman, I, I would have signed this kid instantly. So where is he in the, on the market? Uh, you know, is this gonna, still a possibility they signed uh, JT Ramolta? Oh, my Ramolta? God. I, I, would, I would kill for that. Absolutely. But he is signing somewhere. This kid is a good ball player. He's no got kidding. two, three years uh, of, of, of that's, good stuff that's left. Rarity. So he, he'll he land somewhere. Good. Yeah. So, listen, um, before we move on to um, our notable passings, we're, we're on the baseball topic here. Let's talk about Henry Aaron. Because oh, it was, um, you know, one of the great players, great players and ambassador to Major League Baseball. His, his career after he retired and what he endured was a big deal. And when it came down that, you know, Henry Aaron passed away and he got his COVID shot three weeks ago and he was happy, healthy, said he never felt better, and he passed away. And... Um, we couldn't possibly even talk about Major League Baseball without an event like this happening. And it's been a crazy year for Major League Baseball and the history of baseball. Field of Dreams guys have died, right? If we went down the list, the Lou Brocks, the Morgans, the, the Whitey Fords, the Tom Seavers. However, Henry Aaron, and you and I watched him. I remember watching... The game, he hit his 715th home run off Al Downing I was in, bring in, that up. in Atlanta, were, Fulton County we Stadium. Watched it. It was, I think it was a Monday night. I said that was a Monday night, but yeah. I'm not 100% no. sure, but I, it felt like no, a Monday it was. night. It was Monday night baseball. And, you know, the, him running around the bases and what he endured, you know, when he came off the, you know, hit the home run and he, he, said, he said, I'm just, thank God it's over. But we, it, we were too young to appreciate his heyday. Right. Who H Hank Aaron was at this point, right? Yep. Uh, I have a quick memory that you're going to remember. Jim and I, uh, Jim is a year and a half older. Great family friend, Bobby Hart, the late Bobby Hart, had two tickets for the Mets game. Yep. And I was, right? And there was only one between you and I. And you got, you, you were voted in, you're going to the game, and I did the wah, 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 <laughs> right? Yes. So much so that I went to the game. <laughs> I, and I, I give you credit. You, you actually, you, you. I you, caved in. You caved. Last time you ever did that, of course. But my point is, I went to Shea that day. The only time, like. Which is why, why by the way, I who, have never been to a New York Mets baseball game. Okay. So because get, of that day. guess who they were playing? The Atlanta Braves. Oh. And guess who? So I, oh. I sat upper deck behind home plate. I did not know this. I, I sat upper deck behind home plate, and guess who hit a home run his first time up? Henry um, Allen. Number 44. Wow. To left field. <laughs> off, off John Matlack. Now I am 10 times more upset that I came. But it's a true story. <laughs> wow. So then back to Al Downing. We watched that. Who caught the ball in the, in the bullpen? Uh, Joe Ferguson, I believe. Tom House. Tom House, you're right. <laughs> you're right, Tom House. I think Joe Ferguson was the catcher in that game, uh, actually. <laughs> somehow I think he's involved. <laughs> he was the catcher. But the point is, so I heard Henry Aaron died. And I, I already knew his stats for the most part, but I, I looked him up immediately. I did, too. He is the all-time leader in RBIs. He's the all-time leader in this. In Total Omar. bases. He is the home run king. He is the genuine <clears throat> home run king. Okay. But we all know about his baseball talent. He was a great person. He was. He was like Jackie Robinson that had to endure this racism like... like and he was like, like he, unbelievable what he went through. Even and, and this was in the in the seventies. I mean, well, he's, the he's six, to think. This is you know, Robinson. Well, was Robinson 48. was the fifties, but Hank Aaron endured it in the sixties until the you know that type of thing. But no one has ever said one bad word about Henry Aaron. I agree. And I mean, this is a a, a major notable passing and. You know, R.I.P. to Henry Aaron, just one of the greatest people and uh, yep. uh, heroes uh, of ours. I call him an ambassador for baseball because yeah. nobody you you hit it right on the head. Nobody had a bad word to say about Henry Aaron. That's right. 
And um, let's talk about Henry Aaron, because I did look up his numbers and so forth, and uh, I don't want to say compiler, but his last, you know, <coughs> believe it or not, I looked him up compared to him to Willie Mays, right, who, who we know we're going to be sitting here talking about Willie Mays passing away in the next year or two, because he's already 86 or whatever, right. but I always thought Willie Mays was a great player. But I remember one of my father's friends when we were growing up and we were talking about Henry Aaron versus Willie Mays. And I also looked up Henry Louis Gehrig. I looked up George Herman Ruth. I looked up uh, Ted Williams. I looked up Ty Cobb. Right. And the numbers overall, Henry Aaron has records that may never be broken. Yeah. And, you know... <laughs> The fact that what he endured, and and, and, and it, to me, it's unbelievable that it happened in the 1970s, what he had to endure. No, more, the hate again, mail more and so in forth. the 60s, more in the 60s. No. Henry this, Aaron. When he was about to break Babe Ruth's record, he got mail but trucks. But he was 30-something at that point. The point is, in the 60s was, you know, the 60s. Yeah. That I, to me, that was the height of the racism. Where, that he endured. Oh, no question about okay. that. I just wanted to make that. But I'm that, saying, the even in the 70, 1974, when he was going to break yeah. this record, yes, he was that enduring was, it. Oh, there's no doubt. I, I understand your point because it was, oh God, it was awful. It was like getting letters from the Ku Klux Klan every every single day. And you and I were nine. Where death threats were, you were and actually I were part of. Ten and eleven, respectively, and watching this. Right. And when he hit that home run, we looked at each other. We almost hugged each other. That how cool was this? It was. And what a great, great man. That's a big, big loss for yeah. Major League Baseball. No, but you know what? To your point, that year was oh my god. Death threats and everything. There literally was death threats. If, like, you know, if you blah, 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 break, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. So, oh, God. I mean, I, mean, I, I was what, sad to hear the passing. He's 86 years old, but what a great life and what a great man he was. You bet. And listen, you know, there's a lot of other things we could talk about. And first of all, we were negligent in not bringing up our, our one of our sponsors, Lynch. Toyota, That's Manchester, right. Connecticut. That's right. And we hope they're all happy and healthy. Yep. We, we could talk about the big UFC fight tonight, which is Conor McGregor versus Poor. And here's my thought. I don't care one iota, and I'm not paying a dime to see it. You know my feelings on this UFC. It's not like boxing, which we're boxing historians. We know everything that went on in boxing. But this UFC... UFC thing is just too barbaric for me, and I'm not I'm not spending two seconds of my sports time talking about it. So, with that being said, our notable passing segment, and yeah. uh, here, there's a name that came up just you know after our show last week was Don Sutton, and you and I have talked about it. You called me when it happened, and I, I talked about it before. I thought he was a compiler. And a compiler from a sports perspective, I think you all know, you hang on too long, you pad your numbers, and, and you get there. Not like Henry Aaron, not like Willie Mays, although, <laughs> I want to get to that, I'll get to, back to that in a second. Um, just, Don Sutton, I looked at his numbers, and I must retract he uh, had some pretty good well, numbers for a long time. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> because I was going, if you kept saying he was a compiler, I was just going to shred you. And now right I'm going to retract and say his last five years, he was a compiler. But in his heyday, unbelievable numbers, like 200 innings a year. All-time Dodgers never, leader in wins. Never went on the disabled list. Never missed a start. I agree. You know, Don Sutton. I looked his numbers. <laughs> Overall, he 120 was. 120 once, okay, but he won over 10. You know, this, that, and the other thing every freaking year for like this, that, and big game pitcher. And his overall career ERA was 3.21. <laughs> I, I must admit, I'm on the air talking All to you. a famer. And you, I, I was always on the fence about it and, and, and disputed it. But you know what? I'm retracting and saying 
he was on a staff with Koufax and Drysdale. That's right. I he, mean, this guy came to work. He was a rookie <laughs> with, 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 with those big boys. Big, I, big loss for Major League Baseball. Yeah. And I, I uh, you know, yeah. Hall of Famer, absolutely. Absolutely. And 50, 60 games one over of, 500. And considered one of the, like, again, like a Henry Aaron. Just nobody had a bad thing to say about Don Sutton. Yeah. Um, Great I was, broadcaster. I, yeah, I, I was saddened by his passing. Me too. And, uh, but to your point, Don Sutton was the type of guy where he was that consistent and good that you kind of lo- lost sight of how good he was, right? That type of thing. Because he didn't win 20. He didn't go 25. And he wasn't four. Tom Seaver. That type of that thing. That kind of thing. But, right? yeah. Don Sutton, bona fide, yep. Hall of Famer, 324 career victories, yep. and uh, I was saddened by that. But well, before we move on, you know, we talk about Henry Aaron's numbers, and I looked at his numbers, and I told you I looked at Ty Cobb's numbers and Ted Williams' numbers. <laughs> it's just unbelievable when you put it into perspective what, what Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth's numbers were. Sure. Right, and you try to achieve it, and this, and this year Don Sutton passed away, and we we try to compare him to Tom Seaver, right? Who would you rather have, Seaver or Sutton? And that, it's just open for debate from a historical sp- perspective, but I, like I said, R.I.P. Don Sutton. Absolutely. I I, I give you more credit than I did and like in the past. Henry Aaron never got hurt. Yeah. All he did was show up for work every yep. single year, and before you know it, he played twenty something years. And yep. Uh, that you have to, you know, acknowledge that. But when I saw that Don Sutton <laughs> was never on the IR and never missed a start, most consecutive a, season starting two hundred. These guys a, today don't start two hundred. That's innings. unbelievable. And yep. Don Sutton was a change of speed type of guy. He was a pitcher's pitcher, and he had that famous curly hairdo hanging out under his he head. Did. That's his he, trademark. He did, man. Right? So, uh, R.I.P. Mr. Don Sutton. Yep, and listen, while we're in notable passings, um, Ted Thompson, former uh, general manager of the Green Bay Packers, yeah. drafted Aaron Rodgers, he who did. we talked about a little sure. earlier. Yeah. Played eight years for the Houston Oilers. Okay. I mean, yeah, you know. no. But He's that's more, a fam- yeah, more famous for being an NFL uh, general manager, general manager yeah. executive. But, yeah, Ted Thompson, that's a notable passing. Big that? time notable passing. Uh, <laughs> Who else? Oh, listen, before we go in, you know, that's it from the sports world, but you know, Larry King today, you know. Yes. What a tough interviewer he was. He oh. just gave those questions, and, you know, everybody went, married eight times. We're joking here because he was actually successful in what he did. Yes. But, you know, one Brooklyn of the Dodgers fans, I used to go to the games with my father. One of the <laughs> ugliest guys out there. Creepy. Married Creepy. eight times. To he was a bum, like, early on. Oh, he so, got caught for, you know, yeah. cashing bad checks. CNN and, hired, Ted Turner hires him, and it's the Larry King live. But you hear the lording of him today. and we, I'm not lording him. I, listen, but I, we, you don't I, dispute his, I res- his impact in I the media. I respect the impact that he had and, and made a name for himself, became very wealthy, and so on and so forth. Yep. But listen, R.I.P. Larry King. But You're done. <laughs> listen, <laughs> it was a skit. It was funny to watch him. I mean, and he was still I, on the air I with never, the suspenders. I never took him seriously. Is my point. But he did have the most prominent people I in the news. I am acknowledging that. At the time. But while it was... Prime at, time on CNN was like happy days. But while it was at the time, I'm watching this going, I can't believe this <laughs> bozo is, is actually... <laughs> People think he's credible. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently he was, because he made yes, a ton of money. absolutely. But he was Mar- 87 years old. Married eight times is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It's worse than Liz Taylor and Zsa Zsa and Richard Burton and all this Oh, they're not even close to Larry King. I don't think Elizabeth Taylor got married eight <laughs> times. so ridiculous. Anyway, R.I.P. Larry. Hope you take your suspenders with you up- upstairs. And here's one funny thing we're going to wrap up. It's not a funny thing. It's a, it's a notable passing, but... 
Phil Spector also passed away in, yeah. in, the, in the clink, you know? Yeah, the wall of sound. In the hooskow. <laughs> well, well deserved to be in the hooskow. I know, but it's so funny. Again, we talk about Larry King. This guy was a genius in the music business, but yeah. he was a creep on the other side he of was, the wall. But the difference was this guy was special. Phil Spector <laughs> was Oh, from his impact on what he, what he delivered from a musical? Yes, no his resume musically is is really, it's close to being unmatched. Exactly. He, he, like a, a special, special talent. But he turned into this, this creepy I think he always thing. was a creepy guy. But really, you know, unfortunately. Ask what Ronnie Spector's uh, right. perspective right. of Right, I mean, we have to acknowledge you know, he deserved to be in jail. He yeah. deserved to be in jail probably 20 years prior. Exactly. You know, but he was making too much money for the... But the, you do have to acknowledge the wall of sound and the greatest artists in the world came to this guy because they knew... He would get it done. This guy was really special. It. But uh, am I sad about him? No. No? I appreciate, you know, his, his legacy... But what a creep. <laughs> what an absolute creep. Oh, and how apropos for him to die in the can Have for stand. being a creep. You know? oh, God. <laughs> Hope he got shiv. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he must have been a, you know, a hacky sack for oh, all these guys God. in jail. Right. <laughs> how many wigs did he have in, <laughs> <laughs> in prison? <laughs> But anyway, that's our notable passings from this week. Like I said, Henry Aaron, R.I.P. Yeah. Big time, man. Yes, uh, yes. Good luck to the Buffalo Bills and uh, good luck Mike to the Burns Kansas and City Thomas Chiefs. Kramer. And, but we lo- I'm all in on Kansas City, folks. I know you are. You're going to ride that to the end. I so. am. Hey, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But, uh, if but I'm you right, guys heard our picks. and uh, You did. Yeah. Send us an email and give us our thoughts. If we miss them, you know, you, you could chastise us. Absolutely. You know, we're open to that. So I, I really want Kansas City, Green Bay, Super Bowl. Yep. And it will be the highest rated Super Bowl ever. Why? Because nobody's going to the game. Right. Blah, blah, blah. People are sitting home. There's right. nothing to do. Right. Right? So yeah. let's get that out of the way. Oh, the Super Bowl. The NFL is back. Ratings are, you know. <laughs> Let's be real. Yep. <laughs> but thanks for joining us, everybody. And listen, stay happy and healthy and, and so forth. But uh, like I said, send us an email. And Steve, look, looking forward to next week because we got to talk about our picks. You bet. Right? All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll catch up to you next week. Thanks. Bye.